Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story: high levels of cancer-causing metals spotted in fake goods from China, plus a list of fake Chinese knockoffs seized by U.S. customs authorities. Actress Nicole Kidman's new series banned inside Hong Kong. That's despite being filmed in the city. More on why. Chinese-owned TikTok set to lose thousands of songs from major artists, including Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift. What happened? And a Chinese billionaire suddenly quitting his executive roles at a top Chinese investment bank. How is Beijing involved? Dangerously high levels of carcinogenic metals found in counterfeit Chinese goods seized by South Korea. On the list, fake earrings and knockoff leather bags claiming to be Chanel, Dior, and Louis Vuitton, as well as clothing and shoes. In some of those items, the concentration of lead and other metals were found to be over 900 times more than safety limits allow. South Korean authorities sounded the alarm after they found the problem in Chinese counterfeit products. Many of them contain lead and cadmium metals that can increase the risk of cancer. Long-term exposure to lead could also result in kidney damage. The health risk may not stop at South Korea, though. China is the world's largest source of counterfeit goods. In 2022, over 60 percent of the counterfeit goods seized by Customs and Border Protection came from China. A large majority of the goods that we seize are from China and Hong Kong.、Uh, probably between 70 and 80 percent of the goods. Russo said in New York alone, officers seized about 273 million dollars worth of counterfeit goods. We really、uh, stress to、uh, the consumers,、uh, to the citizens, not to buy counterfeit goods because they're they're unsafe, and they they fund、uh, criminal organizations. On top of health risks, counterfeit goods from China also hurt American businesses, undermining authentic products through cheap price tags. Here's a list of fake Chinese goods that were stopped at ports of entry. Cincinnati CBP seized fake merchandise branded with logos owned by Major League Soccer and the NFL. And last week, officers in Puerto Rico intercepted over 100 pieces of counterfeit luxury jewelry from China. Last October, Indianapolis officers seized over 360 fake watches made to look like Rolex, Versace, and Gucci styles. On top of this, hazardous products from China have sparked other safety fears. This January, an 11-year-old girl in the UK suffered severe chemical burns after using nail polish from Timu. She had two skin graft surgeries afterwards. Timu offered over $2,000 in compensation. Australian actress Nicole Kidman's new show has made its debut across the globe. Despite being filmed in Hong Kong, viewers in the city are blocked from watching it. What sparked the censorship? NTD's Sam Wong has the details. At the peak of Hong Kong's COVID-19 lockdown, Aussie movie star Nicole Kidman received a rare exemption from Hong Kong officials to film a new series. She was one of the few in her crew who got to walk free in the city, as residents and travelers were bound by quarantine. Axbas is an Amazon Prime drama about foreigners living in Hong Kong, but upon its release last month, it was made available everywhere besides inside the city itself. The show features scenes of the Umbrella Movement in 2014, when thousands of pro-democracy activists took to the streets to demand a transparent election. It all started with Beijing proposing a rule which allowed the CCP to handpick candidates in Hong Kong's elections. Axbas isn't the only show subjected to censorship in Hong Kong. Disney Plus previously took down episodes of The Simpsons from its service there, thus for making reference to China's forced labor camps. In 2020, Beijing began to push its draconian national security law onto the city. Hundreds of pro-democracy activists have since been arrested or forced into exile. The entertainment industry also became a target a year later when the city passed a law that would ban films deemed to violate China's so-called national security. Sam Wang, NTD News. Taylor Swift, Drake, Adele, Billie Eilish—these are just some of the artists whose music could soon disappear from TikTok. The social media app has lost the rights to license content from Universal Music Group or UMG, one of the world's largest music conglomerates. Earlier this week, Universal Music, which represents hundreds of major artists, wrote a forceful open letter to TikTok. 
It accused TikTok of trying to build a music-based business without paying fair value for the music. UMG said the platform has repeatedly failed to protect artists' rights and interests. The music company said TikTok proposed to pay artists and songwriters at a rate that's a fraction of what other social media platforms like Meta pay, and is allowing the platform to be flooded with AI-generated recordings, which UMG says poses risks to human artists. UMG said TikTok attempted to bully it into accepting a deal that was less than fair market value during negotiations to renew their contract, which expired on Wednesday. As of early Thursday, many popular songs had already disappeared from the social media platform's library, including those from Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, Olivia Rodrigo, and more. While a singer's UMG tracks will be removed, songs licensed exclusively with other music giants like Warner and Sony-owned labels shouldn't be impacted. TikTok has pushed back against claims by UMG, accusing it of putting profit above the interests of their artists and songwriters. The short-form video platform is owned by the Chinese company ByteDance. It's long been accused of providing user data to the Chinese regime. The CEOs of TikTok and other social media platforms faced questioning from senators on Wednesday over child exploitation. Senator Tom Cotton pressed the TikTok CEO on his ties to the Chinese Communist Party. The CEO denied such ties. We spoke to Xi Van Fleet, a survivor of China's Cultural Revolution, who says the situation is not so simple. She joins us to explain why. Help us understand that this concept of private companies in China, if they exist, you posted on Twitter or X, um, TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, in their party branch, having a giant Chinese Communist Party flag. Who is in control here? Party. It's always the party. And they have implemented this system called a uh, party branch ever since they took out power. Every organization, there is a party branch. And what it does is to really ensure that everything there follow the party's uh, instruction, party line. And so, and especially for such an important asset as TikTok to the CCP, they would never let someone just run it. And someone, it doesn't matter who this person is. It might be from Singapore, might be from Taiwan, might, might be from United States unless this person is absolutely under their control. On that note, Senator Tom Cotton is defending his line of questioning. He was telling Fox that, quote, Singapore, unfortunately, is one of those places in the world that has the highest degree of infiltration and influence by the Chinese Communist Party. Now, give us a sense of how that type of infiltration and influence works. How are people, Chinese people, or even dissidents living overseas sometimes coerced to toe that party line? I think Singapore probably is one of the most infiltrated, but so is here in the United States. We even have uh, CCP's police station in San Francisco and a flushing of New York. It is everywhere, but for the uh, Singapore, I think it's especially the case. CCP consider every Chinese, no matter what your citizenship, they consider they are the owner of all Chinese. And they always ask the uh, the Chinese to be patriotic, to love the, their motherland. What they're really doing is to make sure that they love the CCP. And this is something that a lot of a lot of dissident in America has to deal with. They have to deal with the CCP's infiltration and their attempt to control all of us. China says its economy was strong and healthy in 2023, but how true is that claim? Beijing is cracking down on any suggestion that says otherwise. Erasing internet posts that show the economy, stock market and real estate industry are all struggling. Here's more. The world's second largest economy had a tough year in 2023. Now, one of Beijing's answers to the challenge, ban and erase criticism of it. In December, China's Ministry of State Security issued this order, resolutely crack down and punish illegal criminal activities that endanger national security in the economic security field. Apparently, that includes disappearing negative commentary from the already heavily censored Chinese internet. 
On December 1st, this prominent economic professor, Liu Jipeng, advised people not to invest in the falling Chinese stock market. Now, all of Professor Liu's social media accounts are frozen. And when you click to follow him, you get this message, which translates, it is forbidden to follow this user due to their violation of relevant rules. CNN found similar freezes temporarily imposed on at least five other Chinese economic analysts. Also removed from the internet, this documentary highlighting economic hardship among Chinese migrant workers. I think the Chinese economy is at a cliff edge at the moment. I don't think it has started falling off the cliff yet, but it's getting to a point where things can get uh, much more difficult. Officially, the Chinese economy grew by more than 5% last year, but the country's youth unemployment rate keeps hitting record highs. Then there's China's all-important real estate sector, which, along with related industries, used to make up 30% of the Chinese economy. This is the Hong Kong office of the biggest symbol of China's real estate crisis, Evergrande. Until two years ago, this company was the largest home builder in China, employing some 200,000 people. Then the company defaulted on its debt, and now a court here in Hong Kong has ordered the liquidation of Evergrande. Across the country, protests as angry new home buyers demand completion of unfinished homes that they've already paid for. Perhaps the only other sector gloomier is the country's stock market. In the past three years, the combined Chinese stock market lost more than $6 trillion. I haven't made any money out of the stock market, so I sold all my stocks. The Chinese economy is strong and it will be stronger, says this Beijing resident. Perhaps she got the message from this recent meeting of the country's top propaganda officials. Their order, amplify bright prospects of the economy as China heads into 2024. Another worrisome statistic for the Chinese economy is also making the rounds. That is, in the third quarter, foreign direct investment went into the negative. According to a Friday report from the International Monetary Fund, China's GDP growth could drop to the 3 percent range between this year and next year, based on the current trend. The Shanghai Benchmark Index saw its worst week in five years Friday. Stocks tumbled, closing 1.5 percent lower. The drop comes amid signs of panic selling. That's as authorities remain cautious about injecting a major stimulus to boost the economy, disappointing investors. The index sank over 6 percent for the week, its largest loss since 2018. A missing Chinese finance tycoon is reportedly resigning from all his roles. His company, China Renaissance Holdings, announced the decision Friday, citing health reasons. His resignation takes effect immediately. Bao Fan was the chairman and CEO of one of China's largest investment banks. He was reported missing a year ago, not long after Chinese authorities carried on an unexplained investigation on him. He hasn't appeared in the public eye since then. What was the investigation about? Chinese Communist regime leader Xi Jinping ordered a nationwide anti-corruption campaign in late 2021. The investigation into Bao's activities came after that campaign was launched. Xi's anti-corruption probe gives Chinese authorities a greater power to crack down on local entities and tighten controls on Chinese wealth. That's to block wealthy Chinese from sending their money overseas. Apple forecasting a drop in iPhone sales and a $6 billion shortcoming on total revenue. The grim outlook comes as the tech giant's China business took a hit. Let's take a closer look. Apple rattled Wall Street on Thursday. The tech giant set a revenue target $6 billion short of forecasts. It also predicted a big drop in iPhone sales. China is the problem. Consumers there have been switching to phones made by local champion Huawei. Foldable handsets are also proving a big hit, and Apple doesn't make one. The firm says sales in the country came in at just under $21 billion over the December quarter, well short of the $23.5 billion forecast by analysts. 
Now it says revenue over the current quarter will be down at least $5 billion on this time last year. That could put it on track for the worst second quarter for iPhone sales since the onset of the global health crisis. The downbeat outlook overshadowed first quarter numbers that actually beat forecasts. iPhone sales grew strongly in most markets outside China. But the focus on the months ahead sent Apple shares down 3% in US after-hours trade. Recent pressure on Apple shares has seen it overtaken by Microsoft as the world's most valuable company. Speaking before the results, Wealth Consulting Group Chief Investment Officer Jim Warden said Apple was paying for its reliance on consumers. Apple is challenged with China. I think consumer discretionary as a whole, it may be more challenging as, uh, you know, as consumers perhaps slow their spending. Analysts also see Microsoft as far ahead on artificial intelligence. On Thursday, Apple chief executive Tim Cook hinted his firm was doing a lot of work on AI, but he said he wouldn't discuss it publicly until later in the year. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform Epic TV where you can watch our full episodes. Here's what to look out for in our second half. As top state advisor to China publishing a new book in English and pushing for global respect for Beijing. But is respect what the regime really wants? In the face of Beijing's mounting military pressure, Taiwan is training its troops to combat sudden attacks from all directions. More on Taiwan's simulated drills. And a warning from China to Ukraine, remove its firms from a sponsors of war list or brace for strained bilateral ties. More on that after the break here on China in Focus. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you soon.